Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So we're going to take a look at Krita today and we're going to take a look at colouring a black and white photo and turning it to colour using the AI Diffusion. Krita is free, AI Diffusion is free, it runs locally off your system. It's fantastic. If you don't have it, I recommend to get it. So what we're going to do is take a look at a photo like this one here, take it from black and white and turn it to colour. Now, it's something a lot of um, people strive to do and colouring manually can take a long time. Uh, using certain AIs, they might not look realistic or like the original uh, person. I'm going to show you tricks to get around that and how to do it properly using um, the AI diffusion in Krita. And we're going to do it right after the intro. So first of all, we want to come over to Civity AI and probably want to pick a model. And the model that I would recommend is the Absolute Reality model. So if you haven't looked at how to put a model in uh, Krita, um, I recommend check out my previous video on how to add models from Civity AI. And that will give you more power to actually take and do more customization from uh, within Krita. So we'll come over now. And we're going to look at opening up an image. So I'm just going to pick one. Bear with me one second. And this is the image we're going to work with today. So what we want to do is we want to set up to get the best results possible. Um, now you might say, hey, look, Adobe's got a coloring app. Oh, you know, the neuro filter in it uh, to do coloring. Now the subscription for it is rather expensive when you take into a year's subscription can be you know, up $400 or $300 plus. You can go out and buy a NVIDIA graphics card for that. And you can use this program, unlimited renders rather than have limited renders, um, you know, credits that you run out of very quickly. I mentioned before I had the Adobe um, subscription. Um, I canceled it pretty much straight away because I ran out of the credits in a couple of hours. So, it was just absolutely insane because you don't always get the renders you want. So if you haven't got this program, take a look at my video on how to set it up and me talking about it. This one here is for coloring. So let's get into it. So first of all, I have my absolute reality in here. So I have already done that as prior video that I talk about it. So we want to set that up. I'm going to come down there and I'm just using this one because there a lot of the models um, that are trained have a lot of females in them. And we want a model uh, in this case, which has a good training of males. Uh, so we don't get a lot of female renders over top of it. But let's talk about controlling it. So first of all, we want to come down here. Here's our background. We want to create the add control layer. That's going to tell it what it's working from. And we want to change this to line art. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn this into line art. Now, here is the trick to it. We want to come up here and we want to press generate a control layer from the current image. So we're going to click that. And this is going to take a moment. I've mentioned before, this is running on an old a GTX 1070. And when I am doing this recording, it is actually using up my RAM while it's doing it, which is going to create some issues. One of the things we want to also do is we want to come through and make sure that our image is not a too big size. The larger the image, the more problems you'll have. So always reduce your image size when you're actually um, using the AI. You can upscale it later. Now it's generated our line art here, and you can see from the original, and we can easily turn that down and uh, get a good idea of how it's actually coming in over top doing that line art so we can see a lot of those wrinkles and details in there. This is the key to getting your coloring renders absolute perfect. And what we want to come up to here is the strength. And we're going to reduce that strength probably down to about 
What this is telling us is, okay, AI, don't go too much over my image. I want a lot of my line art to be visible in the final render. And we're going to come up here and we're going to give some description. So we're going to say that this is an old man. You might put the word very in there. Very old man. And I'm going to say that he has, in brackets, brown eyes. And I'm putting that in brackets so the AI doesn't think brown and think the whole image is brown, brown skin, brown clothing. So we just want brown eyes and we want the AI to understand that brown and eyes is one controlled part. And we're going to put gray hair and beard. I believe I spelled that right. Dyslexia, reading, writing problems creates a lot of fun when um, my uh, auto spell check doesn't work up here. So have to wing it. And from there, we're going to hit generate. You may need to generate a few times to get a good result. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to show you uh, a neat little trick to make sure that uh, this works exceptionally well. So I can't stress enough. You want to press this wonderful little star here, which will create a control layer, which is this. And you'll notice that it's created the control layer down here. And it has also changed it from working on the background to working on the control layer. That's important because if we're just working from the background and we drop the strength down, we'll just get a black screen. Doing it this way will actually get our uh, renders working properly. Now keep in mind, this is taking twice as long, if not three times longer than it normally would due to the fact that I'm recording at the same time. Uh, I do need to upgrade the system, but I just can't afford it. So something I'll have to look at later on. And the only reason I want to upgrade really is so when I'm doing these recordings um, live, I don't have to worry about um, shutting off OBS, reopening it and creating a headache with the edits. Okay, and there's our image there. And you can see that is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it is pretty much, if I close off that layer and we take a look at it, it is almost bang on. Didn't quite get the brown eyes there. The uh, AI has gone a bit uh, crazy and it's decided to put him in brown clothing. Um, that is something I'm trying to learn for the Confidy AI, the way it controls and the way the interface is. Uh, it's a little bit different to uh, Easy Diffusion, Automatic 11. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to control uh, the, the weights, as they call it. So that's that. Now, there's a trick, two tricks I want to show you here. So we have our image, so we can apply that. Now, we come down to layers here. We can turn our back on, so we have our control layer. Now, if we click this layer and we come down to this beautiful, beautiful layer that we can add, there's all different ones. So we want, there we go. So we click on our layer and we're looking for, if I can find it, there is a color layer in here. Bear with me. Easy burn. Okay, so you're not going to have it come up straight away. So if you want to come down to darken, click darken and cl click on easy burn. And that's going to add easy burn to your list. Okay, so if we do color, we'll see it like this. Now the magic comes in with easy burn. And just like that, we can see the difference. So that's easy burn. We'll watch our image. And that's normal. And you can see by putting easy burn on we're bringing out the underlying control image now if we drop that control image off this is our original image now so what has happened is this one here has become a color layer that's what it's turned it into so instead of working as just a normal layer it is now bleeding through to our layers underneath it so when i click on our original one it colors our original image so we get an absolutely perfect recolor 
with all the depth, all the wrinkles, all the details of the original image. And this is a trick that I've not seen anyone do. And it is just absolutely fantastic and gives you that perfect recolor all the time. And when I say perfect recolor, it is better than Adobe's Neuro filters. So we can turn our control on. And again, we get more details if we do that. So we can go for the original with all that deep contrast. Or we can come through and we can turn our control um, line art on, which is the white image, which gives us all those wrinkles. And when we bleed it through, we get more depth and more style. And if we come up to here again and we change this to normal, we'll see we lose some of that um, gritty lines and some of that contrasting of the details. So we'll go back. We'll change it to color. If we change it to color, we can go to our black and white image and we can put color on and we can just get a bleed of a soft color. Again, we click that. We go to easy burn. And we get those rich colors. So they're the two things. If you want a bright one, you might choose to go for that. If you want something which has got the depth of the original image, you, I choose easy burn. So, and that's just two different ways of doing it. And of course, again, we can come down here. We can click that on and we have a few different options for the way that we're blending our generated image. So again, one of the most important things that you want to do is right here. You want to add your um, control layer and then you want to click this one here, generate a control layer from the image. You want to be on your image. So when it first opens up, that's the first thing you want to do, which is going to create your control line art. It will change it to that. Reduce the strength because if it's too high, it's not going to pay attention to uh, your image. It's going to take full liberty and do what it wants. So there it is, a nice quick one for you. And a recoloring method, which is beyond any app for recoloring. You're going to get better colors every single time that you do this. You're going to get, you're not going to get those weird orange tones and things like that. You're going to get absolutely perfect recolors, quality recolors, and recolors which are better than even doing it manually because you're going to get all those skin textures and that there just with a couple of clicks so quick so easy anyone can do it so get on to it and give it a go for yourself and of course don't forget to like subscribe and get the bell on and please if you can share this video to your other social media networks and get the message out there on how to do this it'd be absolutely fantastic uh it's not something I've seen anyone do. I've seen people do uh, like I have done with some of the previous videos. I have done um, just the AI recolors, but you do lose a lot of that original, you know, facial features because it will change the eyebrows a little bit and you will lose some of the wrinkles. But doing it in Crider is just absolutely perfect. You can't fault the results. And it's just with those little tricks of setting it up you'll get perfect results every single time so of course like subscribe get the bell on leave a comment below get a hold of this app if you don't have the app watch my previous other two videos on how to install it and talking about the app and why it is so good and i will see you in the next stream tabulous video Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it would really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.